Hey GED students, I had a student, Crystal, send me this question on the Facebook page. Um, so she was just basically given this algebraic expression here that I have written down, wasn't even sure what to do with it. So first of all, just to clarify uh, what I'm doing here, uh, the only thing I could do here really um, useful is simplifying, simplifying. So basically when I say simplifying, that means that I'm just doing all the math I can do and then you just kind of stop because it, with algebra, when you have letters involved, you can't always um, uh, do all the simplifying you'd like to do. You can't always obey all the signs and symbols. So there's a lot going on in this problem. So let's just read it first. Uh, it says negative nine times the quantity of six M minus three. Those parentheses mean that negative nine is timesing by everything in those parentheses. So negative nine times the quantity of six M minus three plus six times the quantity of one plus four M. So do remember when we're simplifying, we are supposed to follow the order of operations. We're supposed to handle any groupings first, if possible. <laughs> I'm gonna put that, if possible I do groupings first. Uh, then after that we'll handle any exponents. Then after that, any multiplication and division is the third step, multiplication and its inverse. And then finally, we'll handle any um, addition and its inverse subtraction. So addition and its inverse subtraction. Lovely. So where a lot of students will want to start with is these groupings. So let me just go ahead and examine. Because the order operation says we're supposed to start with groupings, right? So let's go ahead and examine what's going on in these groupings here. So like in this grouping, I have 6m minus 3. Hey, that's not a highlight. Where's my highlighter? Oh, apparently, I don't have one. Okay, we'll just look at it this way. So I have 6m minus 3. Now, problem with starting inside of that grouping is we can't do that math. <laughs> you know, a lot of things in algebra you can't add and subtract. And when things are not like, uh, you can't add and subtract them. So 6m is an m term and minus 3 is a plain old regular number term. They're not like, so I can't do anything inside that grouping. Okay, well, oh well. How about this grouping? Same problem here, one plus four M. I can't possibly do this addition. Um, they're not like terms. I can't add plain old numbers like one with M terms, some number of M's won't work. And so um, I'm stuck. I can't deal with the groupings. So let's just go ahead and, oh well. So does that mean I should give up? No, well, actually it doesn't. We have a lovely property in mathematics known as the distributive property, the distributive property, which teaches us how to multiply with a grouping. So even when we can't do the math inside of the grouping, we can distribute, we can multiply a grouping by a number like this, for example. Negative 9 is shoved up against this entire parenthesis. So negative nine is multiplying by the grouping. And uh, what we know, if you know the distributive property, is that multiplication passes out over groupings. So I can go ahead and just multiply one term at a time. So first I'm gonna multiply negative nine with six M and pick up your GED calculator because it can do the multiplying for you. In my calculator, I'm gonna type negative nine, negative, nine uh, times six times six and that says negative 54. Now I do need to face the facts that that was an M term so um, if I want to say that it's multiplying with an M I just shove an M real tight on that number's backside so negative nine times six N is negative 54 M. Great now careful you're not done this negative nine is multiplying by everything in the grouping so now you need to multiply negative nine times negative three and you say Kate Kate that's a minus three yeah when I'm adding and subtracting I read it as minus three but I'm not adding and subtracting right now I'm multiplying when you're multiplying feel free to read that as negative so negative nine times negative three and I get something interesting out I get a plain old regular 27 I get a positive 27 and so I am going to write right here plus 27 when you get a positive number out when you're multiplying we're writing down our little terms there. You need to write plus 27 so we know later what to do with that number. 
All right, now we're not done multiplying because there's another act of multiplication going on here. Negative nine was not the only number shoved up against the parentheses. We also had positive six. Remember, you said, Kate, last time you read that is plus six. Yeah, when I'm adding and subtracting, I think of it like plus six, but I'm not right now. Right now I'm multiplying, so I think of it like positive six. So positive six times one is easy. That's just positive six. And again, that positive six is shoved up against this entire grouping, so I have to pass it out to every term in the grouping. Now I'm doing positive six times positive four m. Well, positive six times positive four is positive 24. And of course, if I wanna multiply with m, I just shove it up real tight. Wonderful, cool. So uh, getting close, we're almost done now. We've done all our multiplication. Okay, so we didn't have any grouping, or we couldn't do our groupings. We didn't have any exponents. Now we've done all our multiplication division. Last step in mathematics is just to add and subtract when we're simplifying. But here's the deal. As we said, in algebra, you're only allowed to add and subtract the same kinds of things. I'm gonna say that again. You're only allowed to add and subtract the same kinds of things. In algebra, that those things are like terms. So let's go gather now our like terms. So like, let me look at my first term. My first term is negative 54m. Okay, so negative 54m is an m term. You're only going to be able to add and subtract it with other m terms. So let me go ahead. Well, this is not an m term. That's a constant. That's not an m term. That's a constant. But this is an m term. That's some number of m's. So I have negative 54m plus 24m. Remember, right now, I am adding and subtracting. So when I go to type this in my calculator now, I will treat that like a plus sign. Negative 54 plus 24 gives me negative 30. And negative 30 what? Well, I was adding and subtracting m's. It's negative 30 m's. Almost done now. I just have two constant terms, two plain old numbers to combine. Positive 27 plus six gives me 33, positive 33, so I'll write plus 33. And this is the correct answer. And it is totally done. But I do just need to point out that some of you guys might have done this a little differently and had an answer that looks similar but actually is equally as correct. You could have started by gathering up the constant terms and looked at the numbers first and said, hey, 27 plus six is 33, cool. And then you could have got, gathered the m terms and said, hey, negative 54m plus 24m is negative 30m, so I'll write minus 30m. And this is equally as correct. Now, every time I say there's, there's more than one correct way to write something, my students start losing their minds. Oh, but which way will be right on the test, Kate? Which way will be right on the test? Don't lose your mind, y'all. Either they will both be right, like if you were to just type it into a box, either one would be equally as correct, and you would not get marked wrong for writing it either way. So either either one would be correct, or only one of them would be in the multiple choice. N neither one of them is any better than the other, so you'll never have the case where, um, where you know, they're both in the multiple choice and you have to choose between them. All right. So if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.